Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, I'm making a radius grinding jig for my belt grinder. Okay, so by my uh, long-winded standards, this is gonna be a pretty short video. If you wanna see the purpose of the tool that I'm gonna be making today, it'll help you to watch the video that I'm linking to in the cards, which shows the tool in use. But basically, it's for grinding the belly of a bullnose chisel, or in my specific case, uh, Sia chisel or Sia Nomi uh, scabbard chisel. So quickly though, look, a chisel is normally flat on the back side. This particular type of chisel, the Sayanomi or scabbard chisel, uh, has a rounded back, which makes it useful for any place where you'd need to chisel a long channel. Um, and I mainly use it for making scabbards for Japanese swords, but you can use it for a lot of other stuff. Anyway, I was gonna make a big run of them this month, so I figured a jig might help me produce them quickly, uh, more quickly anyway, and more accurately than doing it by hand. Now look, this is probably not something that you need, but check it out. It might inspire some other grinding applications that you do that I don't, and that in turn will revolutionize your knife making, or not. Here's the basic design. The chisel will rest backwards with the handle running down this face here. Then the whole shebang will pivot on this boss or stud here. You can move to different holes if you want different radii. Then the pivot mount runs in and out on a little channel in the base. The goal here is to make something that I can construct in a few hours that won't take a lot of fussy screwing around to make. There are some design elements like using magnets instead of some kind of clamping system that were made exclusively to save time. We'll see how that works out. I'll start by cutting up a couple pieces of angle iron. You could use a cutoff wheel on an angle grinder if you wanted, but I'll use my bandsaw, which I can count on to cut very precise angles. I'll also size the base from some 3 8 by 4 inch stock. Finally, we have a piece of one and a half inch stock for the pivot mount. Then over to the mill drill to drill out the holes in the bottom piece of the grinding bracket. I'll also mill a pocket in the front face of the bracket for the magnets that I'll use to hold the chisel. While I'm there, I'll drill a hole for the pivot boss. While the mill's warmed up, I'll mill out a pocket on the base. Then over to the welder to weld up the two bracket pieces. Hey guys, let me just jump in and say that if you've been following my channel all these years and want to help out the channel, uh, there is a way to do it. It's called Patreon. So click the link in the cards and description and it will take you to Patreon where you can help out the channel. You get plans if you, uh, if you help us out to all kinds of knives and gizmos like the one that I'm talking about here today. All right, so let's get back to it. I'll also drop the little pivot axis or boss into the hole in the carrier and weld that in. And that's really about the size of it. I bought a couple of cheap ass ceramic magnets from Home Depot just to test it out. These things are crumbly, they're fragile, they really kind of suck. So I'll replace them with more expensive neodymium magnets if everything works out okay.
Everything tests fine, so I'll weld on a handle from a piece of half inch rod. Finally, just for the sake of gilding the lily, I'll turn a handle on my wood lathe. Completely unnecessary. I could just make the steel handle longer, but it'll look so much cooler this way. Drill a hole down the middle, and it's ready to go. A little more unnecessary work in the form of some paint. And there's the final product. By the way, if you're interested in picking up one of these chisels for yourself, I'll have them available on my website, waltersorrelsblades.com. Sia chisels are really hard to track down, and I find them to be amazingly useful if you try to make a Japanese sword scabbard. They're pretty much a must-have tool, but there's a lot of other stuff that you can do with them. So, link in the cards and description. Okay, so, does it actually work? The short answer is yes, but I'll definitely want to replace the ceramic magnets with neodymium and there's going to be some further fiddling around as I go forward, mainly just to refine the technique that I use. The biggest issue is that the magnets constantly want to suck the little contraption into the platinum of my grinder, so you have to put some reverse pressure on it. I'll probably want to kind of clamp it down so it doesn't do that. Also, the magnets hold the chisel okay, but you have to support it from underneath. I'm hoping the stronger neodymium magnets will do the trick and make it so that it's on there really firmly. Now, it would make sense to replace the magnets with a clamp system of some sort that would make the whole thing rock solid, with no potential for the chisel slipping and no magnet sucking problems, if I were going to make 100 chisels a month. But I'm not, so I'm not going to bother with that. So, is this a perfect 10 of a gizmo? No, but I'd give it, you know, solid six and a half, seven. I tried A, B, and hand grinding the belly on these Saya chisels versus using the jig, and the jig absolutely makes for a more even radius. So the general point that I'd make about stuff like this is it's always valuable to look at anything that you repeat in your shop and see if some sort of jig or fixture is going to help you do that you know, faster, more accurately, more repeatably, whatever it is. You kind of weigh the benefits of the jig or the fixture against the time that it takes to actually make the thing, and then you decide accordingly. If the time savings or the quality improvement that you're anticipating doesn't seem totally obvious, then you really shouldn't bother. Just keep making knives. In this case, though, here's this big old pile of side chisels that I made this week. So, you know, the tool must be doing something right. By the way, uh, in that vein, I did a video a week or two ago about, you know, various little gizmos, fixtures, jigs, whatever that I've made over the years. Link in the cards. Some of them require milling and welding and, you know, other gear that you may not have. But some of them were just carved out of wood or whatever. So, you know, you might find some inspiration in that one. Look, sometimes there's a really dumb, cheap looking solution that, you know, is not going to impress engineers at NASA, but it still works great. So, you know, for just for me personally, when it comes to tools, I am never ashamed of ugly. I just want it to work. All right, guys, thanks for watching and see you soon. Thanks for watching guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. 
Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Dig in the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years. So I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. Walter Sorrell's Blades dot com.